Welcome to Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. I'm Joshua Ratto, and your co-host. If you're new to this work, please start with episode one. Intermediate students can start with episode 98, and advanced students can start with episode 200. Now with me, as always, to share her insights and her wisdom is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. Kelly, what is going on? I'm channeling I feel like my inner I'm like... Samuel L. Jackson today. <laughs> I feel like I'm on WWE. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I was a huge fan growing up, so that would make sense that that would transition into my future podcasting career. Was not ever on my list. (laughs) (laughs) But I guess it is now. On this corner, ding, 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 shaman extraordinaire. (laughs) I mean, you got the name Sparta. I mean, you're already already, there. You're there. So, so a little interesting tidbit from uh, Panama for this this week before we go into things. Um, it was election day on Sunday, and they elected everything: mayor, uh, president, the whole night. They, there were seven different people running for president of this tiny little country that that is literally the size of Pennsylvania, right? Seven people. I, I had no idea, but it, I can't vote anyway, so it didn't matter to me. But what happens is that they everybody gets the day off to vote and everybody uh and and there's no uh alcohol served anywhere on voting day so you can't get drunk and vote weirdly (laughs) um so it's it's and it starts from midnight the day of the vote so all the bars close early everything yeah it's it's very interesting to watch it really happen. really cool actually when you, right? when you think about it I, I mean that's a system that takes their you know the future leaders of it very seriously it's almost like we could take a little bit of a book at, out of that page here in the in the states well and we had several people come over the course of the last couple of months to knock on our door well they don't knock on doors here so it's a very interesting thing no one will knock on your door they will yell from the patio buenas buenas until you respond to them <laughs> Uh, but we had, I want to say like four different people for, for all I know, those could have actually been the candidates for president. I have no idea. I live in a Panamanian neighborhood. So, uh, you know, they would have, they were coming into the Panamanian neighborhoods and, um, there was a huge, huge parade of people. And I don't really mean a parade. It was just a very freaking long line of cars that was promoting one of the candidates. And it caused like an, a ridiculously long backup. The person I talked to who saw the line said it, that she had counted a hundred cars and then she gave up because the line was still so long. So I was like, you know, if you were doing that, I would not vote for you because you <laughs> disrupted my town and we don't need that. Right. <laughs> But whatever. Um, but it's been an interesting it's been an interesting season in that way. So it, uh, you know, it's always fun to see how different things are done. So yeah, that is that is cool. You know, even traveling around the states, you know, I've, one of the things I've noticed is it's so just going county to county, you feel these energetic shifts. It's like you you can see it, right? Like there's this certain county by me. I I go there and it's like I'm warped twenty years behind times and i'm not saying that's in a good or bad way it's just the way it looks it feels like uh it's just different when you when you when you uh cross that border so i know what yeah. you mean well and i was listening to a tiktoker the uh, earlier today actually uh he just recently moved his family to france and uh he was talking about the fact that his stress levels have dropped dramatically and it's just the ambient energy in the space and he was like, I had no idea. He's like, I knew hustle culture was real, but wow, right? And that's exactly what I was experiencing when I left. I was like, I can't be in this energy anymore. It's just too intense, right? And um, so, it, you know, there's, in addition to that, as we talked about on my coaching call today, uh, and in some of, you know, basically every coaching call I have with every, anybody, uh is the end of the eclipse season that we've just been through, right? And the, there's another alignment coming up in June. I think it's the 
it's either the third or the sixth, I think it's the third, where there's a massive planetary alignment happening across the entirety of our solar system. And it's just like, you know, haven't we had enough? <laughs> like, like, I know so many people who are going, uncle, uncle, I give, I give. So <laughs> this is, this is a thing, man. It's a thing. So yeah, it's been, it's been an interesting ride. So if you are in the space where a lot of my peeps are, where you are feeling like you got the heebie-jeebies, like you want to crawl out of your skin, that's appropriate because we are all going through an identity up level right now. And all of the energies astrologically have brought us to that place. And so if the heebie-jeebies are getting you down, do not try and dissipate the heebie-jeebies. The heebie-jeebies are what are giving you the energy to make the change. Don't try and get rid of that energy. Instead, use it. Say, I am getting to this new thing. Come hell or high water, I am making a commitment. So get on board or get out of the way because this is what you need to do when you have the heebie-jeebies. That, that says, I am ready to crawl out of my skin. And that is literal. That's literal, right? We are all snakes shedding our skin, and we are stepping into the new incarnation. So don't, don't dissipate that energy. You will be sad because you will be stuck and you will have to use a lot of energy to try and get yourself unstuck. So make use of the energy while you have it. I like that. It's a uh, lines up perfect too. You know, my, my snake just started uh, shedding its skin over the course of the last week. So and she's always in alignment as well. Everything is always just so in alignment and interconnected. And we're just, you know, I was listening to a, a previous podcast uh, not too long ago about, you know, it was with Catherine and you were talking about shamanic death. And, uh, you know, there was a, a piece in there that that resonated with me about the people that, you know, really kind of go through this process uh, are the hard headed ones, the ones that are going to make it. So, you know, you know, we hold on a little bit with our warrior, I think during this time. Yeah. yeah a little bit of stubbornness, never hurt anybody. <laughs> Back to super useful. So, okay. So let's get on to our topic for the day. Uh, and we're going to actually talk about something I've been wanting to talk about for six freaking years. I actually had scheduled a few people to come on and talk about it and each time they canceled. So clearly this was the time for it to happen. And uh, it was clearly just meant to be me because <laughs> it just didn't work out otherwise. So we're talking about cosmic sexuality and uh, ex we're going to explain Tantra uh, at its basic form. And um, so, you know, this was your sweetie's idea because we... Uh, we, we had a last minute, wait, what are we going to talk about today moment? Cause I hadn't pre-scheduled and, and which is unusual. And, um, so, you know, bless her heart start. and bless yours because you know how uncomfortable this makes it. <laughs> so let's get into it. Cause this is, you know, like one of the things that you, we've, I've learned is that <laughs> if what makes you uncomfortable, let's just, let's get it right out there, put it right out onto a podcast format and just, just rock and roll right through this. And I, you know, let's, let's, let's do it. Okay. So uh, in Tantra there, and I'm going to use these terms and I want y'all to not come for me. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to use these terms. We're going to use masculine and feminine. And these are energies that we're talking about here. We are not talking about gender. We are talking about energies. So you can be homosexual and this will still work for you. Okay. These are not genders. They're energies. And, you know, the, for those of you who are non-binary, I want you to know that you are also welcome in these energies. It, it is just the energies that we're talking about. Okay. So let's start with, there are, there's a balance of masculine and feminine, and you're seeking balance within and without. Okay. So that's, let's start with that. Everybody thinks of Tantra and they think of it as a uh, sexual practice. And there is a sexual practice associated with it, but it is a very small part of a larger religion. Okay. And so the, the energies that we're talking about are about balancing within and so that you can then balance with a partner, right? Because if you are balanced inside of you, then you can bring whatever part of the balance is necessary with the partner outside of you. Okay. And so the, the inner balance is, and, and the outer balance, they're, they're reflective, right? 
is the masculine energy holds the container and the feminine energy fills the container like liquid. Okay. And so I'm going to steal a, a, a phrase from David Data, who does a lot of teaching on this subject. And he, what he says is, if the container is not solid, then the liquid inside must freeze to avoid leaking out. And so this is what happens inside of us and in connection. So if the masculine energy in the relationship is not holding a solid container, then the feminine energy will freeze out the masculine because the feminine will hold itself. And the only way for a liquid to hold itself is to become frozen, right? So this is, this is the dynamic that happens. So inside of us, what that means is that we freeze to our own emotions. We freeze to our own needs. We freeze to our own desires. We freeze because our container isn't solid. And we've talked about the, the solid container thing, sort of ad nauseum on this podcast, but I'm going to reference it again in case this is your first episode. And so, you know, the, the container that we hold for ourselves is our identity. And when we don't know who we are, when we're not solid in who that is, when we won't take up space in our own lives, when we can't set good boundaries, when we can't uh, own our power or uh, identify our value when we're not doing anything, it's not a doing this state, it's a being this state. And when we don't love ourselves, then, then our container isn't solid. And when that container isn't solid, then everything freezes up. Okay, so that's, that's number one. Externally, what that looks like is if the container is not being held by the masculine energy and that, that again, this is not gender, right? In my relationship with my husband, I hold the masculine, he holds the feminine. So, you know, it, it does not have to be gender oriented. And in fact, it's not at all correlated with gender. Uh, but if the masculine is not holding a solid container, the feminine cannot be water. And so you end up with sexual dysfunction, you know, uh, people not wanting to have sex, things like that. Um, and that's, that's number one. So you, you need to be very clear uh, how the container is being held. And, and I want to be clear, it's also not defined. So you can switch roles. So my husband could hold the masculine and I could hold the feminine. That, that can happen, right? It's just our default is I'm the breadwinner. I'm the person I, I take on all the masculine roles in our relationship. And he's, he's the house husband. He does all the cooking and he takes care of the house and all the things. So in the, the traditional quote unquote dynamic, we have a reverse gender role, but that doesn't have to be the case when we go into sacred sexuality. You know, that, that brings me to a question. So I, I studied this a, a little bit last year, you know, me and me and my partner were both looking into this and, and, and practicing some, and we came up, you know, with, you know, uh, some teachings that were like white and black Tantra. Like, can you explain that a little bit, what that is? Black Tantra? You sure you don't mean red? It could be red. I, it, it might be, it might've been red. It's been a while. Yeah. I don't, I don't recognize black Tantra, but there's white and red Tantra. White okay. Tantra is the healing path. Red Tantra is the sexuality path. So white Tantra is more the inner healing work that we do, that we talk about on this pod podcast all the time. And the red Tantra path is the sexuality path, the energetic connection, the blending, the, the moving of energies through sexual union and things of that nature. Um, Donald Michael Craig wrote a book called Sex, Sex Magic. Uh, he was actually a friend of Kathy's back in the day. <laughs> Of course he was, because, you know, she's Kathy, but um, the, you know, sex magic is done during uh, sexual intercourse. And that is something that, that can be done as part of the red path and Tantra. Uh, and, you know, it's the, the idea is to use uh, the energy of climax as the energy to fuel the working that you're doing, right? I've always found it too complicated and I don't like to be that much in my head. <laughs> like, why, why? I can pull that energy from other places. Why do I want to make this hard on myself? Ha ha, pun intended. 
Uh, and okay. so the, you know, I don't do a lot of sex magic for that reason, because I'd rather just do that while I'm not engaged in other things that I would like to enjoy in other ways. But uh, the, the path of Tantra energetically is a connection point. And so the, uh, and now I am going to go to gender uh, for a moment because this does tend to be a gender-based thing. Uh, and what they say is that the path to unity is through the woman. Now, I will tell you in my experience that that has often been the case. Even in the reverse gender roles that my husband and I have held, I tend to be the entry point, right? Um, and I think that's honestly because of the, the womb factor and the, the, you know, there's a holding energy and there's a, a spark of life that exists through the womb that is that point. But psychologically, it is more a factor. And this may be, um, you know, I'm not going to get deep into the, the, the gender role dynamics, but, but there are pieces of this. So one is that they've shown that men's brains are very box oriented. You know, you, you put this in a box, you put that in a box, you put that in a box, whereas women's brains are all interconnected wires going everywhere where everything connects to everything else. Right. And that is more aligned with unity than the box. And so I think that's also part of it. Um, and then there's just the gender, uh, um, cultural norms, of you know how you train men and women women are to hold everything you know in terms of we keep track of everything and men are singularly focused and that's how gender norms run you know and uh so that's another piece of you know lots and lots of pieces versus a single focus so um and so you know this and i don't want to I don't want to have everybody get ups upset, but I'm just telling you what the tradition says. Okay. You have to learn how the tradition is written. If you want to study the books. So we're just going to say that. Okay. Now, energetically, when you make a connection with your partner, you are seeking a place of unity where two become one, right? Physically, we are connecting in that way energetically we are connecting in that way right and so the idea is to allow yourself to merge with the other person and then to re-emerge from the other person as an individual at the end now for those of us who are empaths this is not terribly difficult because we do this all the freaking time right we are energetically merged with our partners on a regular basis now the challenge though is that in bed, those of us who are the control freaks of the world have a tendency to go into domination rather than surrender. And that has its role. That's, there's nothing wrong with it. However, it will not get you to unity. Okay, Domination is a control pattern. And surrender is a release pattern. And so they don't go to the same place. And so when, you know, in domination, if you're like, if you go BDSM, right, uh, the submissive will submit to the master. However, they still have a safe word. So they are actually ultimately in control, right? So there really is no actual submission of, from a spiritual perspective within that context. You know, there is an, a personal submission to another person, but there is not a spiritual submission. Um, and so energetically in Tantra, we go for the spiritual submission to that place of, I am allowing myself to unbecome, right? I am allowing myself to disintegrate into the unity of the two of us and then if the two of us take it there into the unity of the universe. Okay. There are energetic orgasms called Kriyas that you can experience when practicing this kind of sexuality. 
And if you've ever found yourself just sort of, uh, it's, it's like you're, I don't know, jerking and, and coming up off the bed and like, you're, you're feeling this energy move through you. That's a Kriya. And that is an energetic orgasm. And so, you know, some people freak out. They're like, oh, what is this? It's, like, it's okay. It's an energetic orgasm. Now, within the context of Tantra, there is a, there's a lot of practices that have no sex, but they have sexual energy exchange. Okay. And so that practice is, if you've ever seen the yab yum position in Tantra, it's where one person sits cross-legged and then the other person sits on their laps and, and crosses their legs behind the other person's torso. That's yab yum. That is the position in which non-sexual sexual connection can happen. Energetic sexual connection can happen. And that position allows you to breathe in synchrony and breath is the place where the connection happens. So initially you breathe in and out at the same time, and then you alternate so that you're breathing in your partner's exhale, they're breathing in your exhale. And so that's, that goes back and forth until you bring your energies into alignment. And the idea is if the energies cycle down one person and then back up and the other person and back down and up again, right? So that instead of doing a single cycle within yourself, you are cycling together and you're becoming a single circuit of energy with the universe. So same concept as your, as the tree meditation, except you're doing it as a single unit. You know, I, I, I have had a question for a long time in regards to Tantra, because I've heard so many conflicting, you know, uh, opinions or, or thoughts on this specific subject. And it's about the male orgasm, right? Mm -hmm. Like is a male supposed to orgasm during a Tantra? I mean, or is that, in, you know, indicative of the path you take, whether it be white or red, or is it just, you know, like there's so, so many schools of thought on this? Yeah. So it is uh, one of the, one of the traditions says that every time a man orgasms, he loses some of his jing, which is his life force energy. And therefore a lot of men who practice the path will practice what is called. Um, oh God, what's it called? My brain just went blank blank. Uh, it's, uh, reten semen retention or something like that. It's, it's basically where you allow yourself the energetic orgasm, but not the physical one. And that way you maintain your life force energy. Now there is also the idea of, um, if you orgasm inside your partner, then your partner receives that energy and can then, if you have the circuit running, can then feed it back to you, right? And so the answer can be yes and no, right? Because it depends on what you're doing. So uh, semen retention is, uh, if you're, especially if you're masturbating, that would be definitely something that you would want to, uh, to work on while masturbating because that energy is just gonna go nowhere, right? Um, yeah. I've seen a lot of things, you know, like when you talk about semen retention and I've, you know, like one of the, once again, this comes from like these rabbit holes of, uh, you know, a bunch of, you know, how the world works these days, yep. but you know, people are talking about pulling that, that, you know, semen energy back up through the spine and, 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 and like in a Kundalini type process. I don't know if you've, you've heard of this or, um, you're talking post ejaculation or pre ejaculation. It's kind of like in the middle, you know, like, like you're at the energetic place, but instead of, you know, allowing that, you know, to, to orgasm, you kind of pull it back up the spine into. Yes. That is semen retention. That is that's the what semen of, retention is. Yeah. Okay. That is the practice. Yeah. So that you do not ejaculate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's the idea is to pull it back, uh, pull the energy back up the spine to keep it inside. Hmm. So, yeah, it's much more complicated for men. It's for women, it's, it's well, it is. I, so I, I, it's, it's complicated for both, but in different ways. 
men have to learn how to control. Women have to learn how to let go. And, uh, you know, for all your listeners out there wanting to practice sex magic, be careful. I have a litany of magical muck-ups in regards to this. Uh, start slow, cast your circle, and, you know, don't make the intentions too big in the beginning because you just may get what you ask for. <laughs> so remember that. Well, that. That goes for any kind of magic. <laughs> that does. It does. Uh, there's There's something a little bit more chaotic, and I'm... The chaos. There is more chaos in in sex magic than there is in in pretty much anything else. I I am a chaos, a, a, an agent of chaos magi- magic, and I will tell you that I have had. I I actually took two weeks off from sex because I was like, I don't know, I don't know if I should ever do that again. <laughs> it backfired so much, um, and uh, we, luckily, you know, Cassie always helps me get back up on the horse. Ha ha ha. Oh yeah, we're having fun today. We okay. are having fun. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, you know, what we're looking to do is to connect energetically with our partner, right? And for women, the biggest thing, the hardest thing, uh, the most difficult thing is to relax enough to allow yourself to get out of your freaking head and into your body because we spend our entire lives keeping track of everything. And, you know, we'll be laying there and looking up at the ceiling going, Oh, I need to paint that ceiling. Right. <laughs> it's like, you know, your partner's going down on you, but you're thinking about painting the ceiling. What's wrong with this picture. Right. You know, if you have to put a blindfold on, put something over your face so you can stop seeing stuff, but then you still got to turn your brain off. Right. So all of these things are a problem. Right. So, you know, this is the hard path for women is to let go of the brain, get out of your head. So imagine yourself at the beginning of your practice with your partner, imagine yourself getting in an elevator in your head and then taking the elevator down into your body and then get off in the heart and then get off. (laughs) Because I am the queen of puns, dirty puns, evidently. So Joey used to laugh at me about this all the time. In the beginning of this podcast, we would end up this episode and I'd be like, what did I say? <laughs> Too many years working the Renaissance Fair, trying to come up with body double entons. Evidently, they just come out of my mouth now. So anyway, the, uh, you know, the upshot is that you need to get into your body if you're going to be able to do the energetic work necessary to do this. And that's whether you're a man or a woman, but for women, the the mind thing becomes more problematic on a more common basis. So, um, and so, you know, I mean, it can be a problem for men too, don't get me wrong, but uh, you know, it is far more commonly reported in women. And so uh, plus the orgasm just takes longer for women and the whole thing. So typically not for everybody, but typically. So what else do you want to know, Josh? You know, I do have a question and I don't want to get so far off topic with this, but you know, it is cosmic sexuality we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So there was a book that we read not too long ago and it was called Anna Grandmother of Jesus by Claire Hartsong. And she was talking about astral conceptions, right? Like, you know, and you know, this was a, a, a channeled conversation from a woman who was part of the Egyptian mystery schools. So my, my, my question is, is that something that is possible? Sure. Yeah. Why not? I mean, you're, you're energetically combining your, you're combining your energetic fields. If, if a soul chooses to embody even on the astral that, the the result of that union if you choose to create it as a a third entity then yeah you could absolutely do that interesting yeah it's an amazing book um a lot of a lot of eye-opening stuff in that one particularly but that's always been one i've wanted to ask you but now you know like now i'm on the podcast with you so i get to just (laughs) fire fire away (laughs) i'll figure yeah I actually had a, a, a boy baby that had been hanging out in my energy field for a long time waiting to be born. And I, I was like, look, you are barking up the wrong tree. There will be no babies. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, all right. And he wandered off. You know? <laughs> but I was just like, no babies. Thank you. 
but yeah, so, you know, you can talk to your baby, babies long before they're born, and, which we found out about with Maria Rothenberger when we did the Spirit Babies episode. I, I can't think of anything. You know, you, you have a, a knack for covering everything very thoroughly, even though it's a very, you know, a subject that you could take two years studying. Yeah. You know. And, and there are, there, there's a lot more to it, but this is, this is not meant to be an in-depth study. It's meant to be a, you know, the equivalent of a two hour class that you would take somewhere. So here you go. There's your, your two hour intro on, on uh, Tantra done in 30 minutes because, you know, I like to be efficient. So, yeah. okay. So I guess that's all for now. We, I will say this. This is your Kellyism for the day, which is find your balance. Find your balance inside, find your balance outside. Within balance, there is truth. Within truth, there is love. And within love, there is joy. That's all That's for today. Beautiful. That's all we got time for this week, folks. Tune in next time when Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Serpa. So long, y'all. Bye. All right.